This is problem eight of um, chapter eight. And this is the circuit we have. It's a parallel RLC circuit. We don't know the value of R. We don't know the value of L. We don't know the current. Uh, we do have the capacitance. We don't have any initial voltages. We do have the voltage. Actually, we do have the initial voltage. Um, it's 24. I didn't write it down, but if you set this to time zero, the E's go away. The E to the zero power would be one. So you could figure it out. 32 minus eight is 24. We have initial voltage. Um, we also have the general um, voltage equation. So what are we looking for? for? Part A, we're looking for the resistance inductance uh, alpha naught, which is the deeper frequency, omega naught, which is the uh, resonant radio frequency. And in part B, we're looking for the general equation for uh, current across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. We're going to use um, Ohm's law for, uh, for the resistor current, and um, we will use the current formula for the inductor. No, actually for the capacitor because it's easier to take derivatives. Is it, it's easier to take derivatives, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say easier or not easier. It's a personal preference. I prefer taking derivatives to doing integrals. Maybe you prefer doing integrals to taking derivatives. In either case, you're either going to integrate to get the current or you're going to differentiate to get the capacitor current. I'm going to differentiate, and then the third equation, you'll just use KCL uh, Kirchhoff's law to um, find the final current so that you know you wouldn't want to do the integral at that point if you have two of the three. Okay, so we can start. When you look at the general voltage equation, you can immediately see that it takes the format for an overdamped response. And so we know some things about that. We know that this is the, of the value A1. We know that this is of the value A2. We also know that the 250, is that or C? Oh, okay, so the negative 250, I couldn't remember if the negative was included, but uh, the negative 250 is uh, the S1, and the negative 1000 is the S2. So immediately we have some very useful information. And let's just, put, just do a, an inventory of all of our information. A1 is negative 8. Is it? Yeah, okay. A2 is 32. S1 is negative 250. And S2 is negative 1000. Well, that's a lot of really useful information because we know that S1, 2 is negative alpha plus minus root alpha squared minus omega naught squared. We have that, right? And we also have that. We have two unknowns, we have two pieces of information. So if we have two equations and two unknowns, then we can solve for both alpha and omega naught. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's write out both of our equations. S1, okay, so we have negative alpha plus root alpha squared minus omega naught squared is equal to negative 250. That's equation number one. Equation number two is negative alpha minus square root negative alpha squared omega naught squared. That's equal to negative 1,000. There's lots of ways to solve this. You could solve it by um, squaring both sides. Um, and uh, solving for alpha and then substituting. You use a substitution, but that would be super duper, super duper hard. But if you didn't see the obvious way to do that, you could definitely solve it that way. The obvious way to do that is to add these two, two equations together. When you add them together, you have negative two alpha is equal to negative 1250. And when you solve that, you have alpha is equal to, oh, I can't see where I wrote that, 
So negative 1250 divided by 2, 6.5. So that's that one, negative e 
raised to the negative 250t plus 4e to the negative 1000t milliamps. Okay, the next part is up to you. I prefer differentiating over integrating. You know, look at your formulas from chapter 6 at the end of chapter 6 and decide which one is easier. And then the third one, um, you can also either differentiate or, or uh, integrate. It's your choice. But the easier way is once you have two, to use KCL to get the third. Okay, so I will be using IC is equal to C D V D T. So that means it's equal to 1 micro, 1 micros times the derivative of that. That's negative 8 times negative 250 e to the negative 250 t plus 32 times negative 1000 e to the negative 1000 t. And when you multiply that through, you should get 0 0.2. Yeah, you should get 0 0.2 e to the negative 250 t minus 3.2 e to the negative 1,000 t milliamps. So that goes over here. 0 0.2 e to the negative 250 t minus 3.2 e to the negative 1,000 t milliamps. Okay, now we have 2. The third, you can of course integrate, that's your choice. But you can also use KCL, which is IL is equal to negative IC minus IR. We have IR. So put a negative sign in front of everything. That's E to the negative 250T minus 4E to the negative 1000T minus 0.2 minus 0 0.2 e to the negative 250t plus 3.2 e to the negative 1000t. Combine the like terms. This and this combine. 1 minus 0.2 is going to be 0 0.8 e to the negative 250t. The e to the 1,000 is combined, and that leaves you with minus 0 0.8 e to the negative 1,000 t milliamps. So over here we have 0 0.8 e to the negative 250 t plus 0 0.8 e to the 